Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Now I'm talking about close fellowship. Jesus didn't die so we could have a religion. He died so we could have a relationship with God through him. We need to know the Holy Spirit as a person. Not a person like we are, but a person. And I say that he's a person because he has all the traits of personality. Everything that makes a person a person, he has it. The Holy Spirit is not an it. He's not an influence. He does influence us, but he's much more than an influence. He's, he's not just a power or a presence, although he does all those things. He is a person. He has knowledge. He has a mind. He thinks. He knows things. He has feeling, and he has will. Now, Ephesians 4.30 tells us that the Holy Spirit can be grieved. Well, you can't be grieved if you don't have feelings. So let's go for a minute and look at how many of you would like to take a, a quick look at what kind of things grieve the Holy Spirit? Because I don't want to do that, do you? I, that's something that I really, 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 really don't want to do. Because if he lives in us and he's grieved, then we're going to feel that grieving too. Ephesians 4.29 is where we'll need to start. Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth. Isn't that interesting how conviction fell right there? <laughs> But only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others. I mean, you know, we say some of the dumbest things. I mean, so insensitive. I said to somebody the other day, good gracious. I had bought this top, and it was, it was the size I normally wear, a medium, but it was just really way too big for me. So I said to this person who's larger than me, I said, you know, this thing is way too big for me, but it probably will fit you. I don't think that really helped her make spiritual progress that day. <laughs> She probably had to spend the next hour getting out of the pit of insecurity. <laughs> so I'm just confessing here so I can let you know that we all have a long way to go. That it may be a blessing and give grace God's favor to those who hear it. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. <laughs> do not offend or vex or sadden him by whom you were sealed, marked and branded as God's own, secured for the day of redemption and final deliverance through Christ from evil and the consequences of sin. Now, what in the world does it mean to be sealed by the Holy Spirit? Well, really bad example, but I keep my crackers in a Ziploc bag <laughs> because I want to keep them protected and fresh and good, <laughs> they're protected in here. And so they're sealed in here. And we are, we are like in the Holy Ghost Ziploc bag as we walk through the earth. <laughs> Amen, and I'm not, uh, hopefully that doesn't sound disrespectful, but it's like we are, we are sealed and branded, the Bible says, as God's own. So when the devil looks at you, he sees the mark of God on you, but you need to know that that mark and brand is on you. And you need to say, devil, shut up. I belong to God, and I am none of your business. Now, you know, I know that my children do things they shouldn't do, and especially when they were were younger, they did things that they shouldn't do. 
and they were my kids, and I'd correct them. But if a neighbor, a next door neighbor came over and tried to tell me everything that was wrong with my kids, I would have been really put out. <laughs> and so God feels the same way when the enemy tries to accuse us to him. Let all bitterness and indignation, now this is really important, verse 31. Let all bitterness and indignation and wrath, passion, rage, bad temper, resentment, anger, animosity, quarreling, brawling, clamor, contention, slander, evil speaking, abusive or blasphemous language be banished from you with all malice, spite, ill will, or baseness of any kind. So here's the deal. If we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, then we need to really pray for God to give us lots of help on using wisdom with our words. And we're going to make mistakes. No man can control the tongue. The Bible says that. We need God's help on a regular basis. Uh, but at least to have that awareness of the power of words and and at least when we say a bunch of dumb stuff, be willing to repent. I think a lot of times we just don't think it's a big deal. You know, uh, gossip, tailbearing, telling people secrets, uh, uncovering people's sins. Oh, did you hear? Did you hear? You would never believe. Come on, let's go back to the little golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. There's no such thing as a happy life without an abundance of forgiveness. I've had to forgive somebody this week. There's rarely ever more than a few days that go by that you don't have an opportunity to be offended. But you don't have to take offense. The Bible says don't take offense and don't give offense. So we say to somebody, you offended me. No, you took offense. It wasn't that they offended you. You took it. And a lot of times, most of the time, people don't even know what they're doing. When I said, you know, boy, this Bible is way too big for me. You know, <laughs> but I think it'll fit you. I mean, I wasn't trying to be rude or offensive. I was trying to give her a gift. <laughs> but I did a really bad job of it. Amen? And I'm supposed to know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I think it's just nice, you know, when those things happen, you're just like, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, it's just, it's good to stay in that kind of communication, that, that kind of conversational relationship with God where you don't let things linger. And, you know, the, the minute that somebody hurts your feelings or you start to feel that unforgiveness, the best thing to do is even say out loud, I will not be offended. Talk to God, I will not be offended. Help me not to be offended. Help me not to be offended. Because the quicker we forgive people, the easier it is to do it. It gets harder the more we rotate our minds around and around what they've done. Then it begins to take roots in us. Let's try to believe the best of every person. Now, there are 25 names of the Holy Spirit in the Bible, 25 different names of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. I don't expect you to remember these. I don't even know that they'll mean that much to you, but I think that it's, I'm just going to take a minute to read them because I just want you to see how much he's talked about all throughout the Bible and how um, just the different things that we can look to him to do. So he's the Spirit. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jehovah, the Spirit of the Lord Jehovah, the Spirit of the living God. Aren't you glad that we serve a living God? I'm so glad I'm not worshiping some guy that came and said a few things and then died. Wow. The Spirit of Christ the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of His Son, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of promise, the Spirit of holiness, the Spirit of judgment, we don't care for that one, the Spirit of burning, woohoo! yeah, the Spirit of burning, 
the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit reveals truth to us. Thank God for truth. I just read a little book. It's not very big, but it's called How to Kill 11 Million People. <laughs> now you're like, what in the world are you doing reading a book like that? Well, because it, it's about how did Hitler manage to kill 11 million people? Why didn't all these people in the prison camps just rush the guards and... <laughs> And so the answer was, he lied to him. He lied to him. First of all, when he was politicking, he promised everybody that his way of life was going to be better and they were going to have more money and better jobs and, you know, blah, blah, blah. We hear some of that today, don't we? Some of that. Anyway, he lied to him about the prison camps. He, when they got on the trains, he lied to them about where they were going. He killed these people. And it was all based on lies. But I am so grateful that we have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth living on the inside of us and that he will reveal to us when we're being lied to. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding lives in you. The Spirit of counsel and might lives in you. The Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The Spirit of life. Man, we're not walking around. Mm, 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 mm. The oil of gladness. And I love this. We get to laugh. Yeah. I decided two weeks ago the devil doesn't know how to laugh. <laughs> That's just my own private thing there. But, you know, I don't see any scripture where he's laughing. <laughs> but God laughs and we laugh. Did you ever think about how powerful a laugh is? It's very powerful. The oil of gladness lives in us. The spirit of grace, the spirit of grace and supplication, the spirit of glory, the eternal spirit, and the comforter. Now, John 16, verse 7. Okay, now this is so awesome. Jesus said, however, I am telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable, good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. Now, I'm sure that that just cramped the disciples' brain. What do you mean I'm going to be better off if you go away? How could anybody be better off if you go away, Jesus? He said, because if I do not go away, the comforter, and in the Amplified Bible, the comforter, in the original language, is a word that cannot possibly be described with one English word. You have to use many different words to describe what that word means. The counselor. When you need a word of counsel, should always go to God first. Always go to him and let him counsel you through his Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong to go to a counselor or to go to someone for counseling, Many times that is very helpful, but you don't want to go to somebody that doesn't have the counselor. Amen. Always go to God before you run to anybody else and then let him speak through whoever he wants to speak through or let him do it himself. The counselor, the helper, oh, I love that. We're going, to, we're going to talk about that pretty exclusively in one of these sessions. The advocate, that means that he pleads our case. The intercessor, he prays for us and through us when we don't know how to pray as we ought. He prays through us. The strengthener, oh, one message is going to be on that. And the standby. I love that word, the standby. I don't know if you know what it's like to stand by on an airplane, but it's like if you couldn't get a seat and you'd like to get on that plane, you can go on standby and you can literally sit right at the gate and wait to see if there's an opening. So the Holy Spirit stands by you just in case there's something you need where he can jump on board and help you. I love it, I love it, I love it. And um, he 
He will not come to you. Now, this is such an important part. Into close fellowship with you. Can everybody say close fellowship? Close fellowship. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. Say close fellowship. I love that. God created us for fellowship. And he wants to communicate with us. A relationship is not one-sided. You don't just do all the talking and God never says anything. God speaks. He speaks in many different ways. He speaks through nature. He speaks through the still small voice. He speaks mainly through his word. God can even speak through our circumstances. God speaks in our heart. Sometimes he speaks even through desires, not desires of the flesh, but real true desires of the spirit. And if you don't believe that God can talk to you, you know, when we talk to God, it's prayer. But if we say God talks to us, they think we're paranoid. <laughs> and you know, you go in certain circles and they just, I mean, you just about get run out of the building if you say God said. But that, to me, I don't understand that because it's all over the Bible. My sheep know my voice, the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Now, obviously, you know, you can get in trouble thinking that you hear from God. There's learning, there's wisdom. But one of the ways that you learn is by making some mistakes and being willing to go back and say, well, man, I thought that was God, but it wasn't. And I sure made a fool out of myself. So <laughs> let me learn from this and go on. But see, there's, there's so much, and I hope just some of you, at least some of you here and watching my television, you're kind of like, while I go to church, I go to church, I'm an usher. I believe the doctrines. No, I'm talking about close fellowship. Jesus didn't die so we could have a religion. He died so we could have a relationship with God through him. And see, God cares about everything that concerns you. I mean, the littlest, tiniest things that wouldn't even make any sense to anybody else, God cares about that with you. He's concerned about everything that concerns you, absolutely everything. Close fellowship, and if nothing else, I want this message to bring you into a greater awareness of how the Holy Spirit is with you all the time. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When I go away, I'm gonna send you another comforter. He's been with you and he will be in you. How much closer can you get than in you? Come on. I mean, being a Christian is absolutely, taking a journey with God is an amazing spiritual journey. There is nothing boring and dull about life with God. Now, if all it is to you is a trip to church each week, go home and act like you're not changed, go back to church, mm -hmm, then that's, you're going to get tired of that pretty fast. But I'm telling you what, to know who you are in Christ and to know your inheritance in him, and to know the power that belongs to you as a believer, to know the power of the Holy Spirit that you can have in your life all the time. Well, there's many other things it says here, and I have to get into some of them later because I want to finish up with this, this one scripture. You say, well, you know, do I have the Holy Spirit? If you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit. I think that that's one of the places where we've made a mistake, you know, is to act like people don't have the Holy Spirit if they've not had some Pentecostal experience. First of all, we want to be careful about putting too much emphasis on experiences. You know, some people have them, some have some that are genuine, some have some that are... <laughs> you know what I mean. Don't think that the way God deals with somebody else is the way he has to deal with you. 
The great thing about the Holy Spirit is he knows us as individuals and he works with us and through us in different ways. And he manifests himself in different ways. And we don't need to be jealous of one another and competing with one another. We need to be working together with one another so we become one body working as a whole unit. So in John 20, after Jesus was resurrected from the dead, he appeared to the disciples, and the Bible says he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. But then if you turn the Bible over two pages to the first chapter of Acts, he said, now go and wait in the upper room for the promised outpouring of the Spirit. And that's when they were, the Bible calls it, baptized in the Holy Spirit. They were flooded with the Holy Spirit. Their souls were diffused with the Holy Spirit. But then even in addition to that, we see Peter was in that upper room and he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. But even with that, there are many times where the Bible says, and Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. And Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. So we need fresh infillings and, and, and fresh uh, visitations from God on a regular basis. And I don't think that we need to make some kind of a law out of how God touches us or how it happens. Some people believe that you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit when you're born again. Some people believe that you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit when you're baptized in water because that's when the Holy Spirit fell on Jesus. Some people uh, believe that it has to be a separate experience that happens at a, at a totally separate time. You know what? We need to give God a little credit for being able to function and operate in a variety of ways and stop acting like, I believe some people probably do receive everything day one when they're born again. So, you know, it, let's let God be God and not care how we got it as long as we get it. Amen? All I know is I just got to be full to overflowing with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, last scripture, Luke eleven thirteen. 13. You say, well, wow. How can I have more of the Holy Spirit? How can I be filled? How can I be flooded with the Holy Spirit? It's very simple. First of all, you got to be really hungry. <laughs> You got to want more. Not more jewelry, more of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Luke eleven thirteen. 13, if you then, evil as you are, know how to give good gifts that are to their advantage to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? and continue to ask him. So here's what I just want to encourage you. We're going to pray tonight, but then I want you, I'd like to see you on a regular basis. God, fill me fresh with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, fill me. I need your comfort. I need your strength. Talk to the Holy Spirit about his ministry. You don't pray to the Holy Spirit. You pray to God in Jesus' name through the Holy Spirit. But you can fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You can chat with the Holy Spirit. You can talk to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me. I know you're here with me right now. I hope and pray that you have the greatest sensing and awareness of God with you through the Holy Spirit that you've ever had in your life. He's here right now. Well, I just want to encourage you to remember that the Holy Spirit is a person, not just an experience or a force of some kind. He is our helper. And God wants to have close fellowship with us. And all we really need to do is to ask Him, Lord, I want to be close to you. Grant me the awesome fellowship of the Holy Spirit.
Today, we are having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayor Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, they've been suffering from those diseases or infections from quite long, but they never go to a medical help because they don't have a finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel. And you know. This event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two, three months. So the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously. And that's what we are seeing that God's grace, everything is going on smoothly. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution to India and because of your help, you are, we are you making us to go every corner, looking every place. And without your support, we cannot go. Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek. Van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. So I'm inviting you to join us in partnership. Help us glorify God and share Christ. Help us help hurting people. Help us feed the poor and get the gospel to people that don't yet know what we know. You can check us out on JoyceMeyer.org and find out all that you need to know about partnership or you can call the ministry. God bless you and thank you for praying about this. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. In het leven lopen we hier en daar butsen en schrammen op. Sponsor over. Maar sommige beschadigingen kunnen het leven volledig lam leggen. Hoe overwin je woede en bitterheid? Lees het boek van Joyce Meyer. Doe jezelf een plezier. Vergeef. En start bevrijd aan je toekomst. Bestel je boek. Doe jezelf een plezier. Vergeef. Via joyce-meijer.nl of bel 026-20-22-100. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meijer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.